going on, y'all? On the Trigger fans, what's good? Welcome back to my content. Welcome, welcome, welcome. So, I found this interesting topic in an article about him confronting his demons in order to get closer to God. And there's so many people in this world that don't really know God, you know, but want to act like, you know, they're really Christians. But if they were, they would just express their love for Jesus Christ rather than just put up a front for the internet and try to act like, oh, I'm this and that, but you didn't really thank God for giving you God's given talent. But I think when it comes to Mark Calloway, you know, he's one of those type of people that is so connected to God, but is done on a different level. I think to me, this article should teach us about life and and give us a different meaning of getting close to God, you know, not on their level, but on our own level, if you know what I mean. So, with that being said, let's get into this article. The Undertaker had to confront a number of demons to get closer to God. The WWE legend, whose real name is Mark Calloway, has opened up about his journey in faith and experienced how he was scared of the rejection, having not lived in a religious lifestyle for many years. He told student magazine i believe in god but didn't invest in a religious life because i was too scared of the rejection wow okay so i want to touch on this part for a minute when he says that he's scared of the rejection i'm assuming since because he accepted god in his life he was probably having that type of fear of god rejecting him because of his wrestling career as the Undertaker, the Lord of Darkness. That could play a huge role in that moment. But when you think about it, people may think that since he's the Undertaker, he's going to be in character, but he's not. He's a real person. Because I remember watching one interview when Mark Calloway was talking to a priest. Um, He basically said that when he first joined the church, he was having that type of fear of rejection because people think that he's the Undertaker. He's going to play in character. But he doesn't, but they don't even realize that, you know, he's trying to get to know God, you know, on his level. And not by force, but just having a little encouragement, even though what I mean. So I think this part right here of this article really speaks volumes. And I think it needs to be talked about a lot more, if you ask me. Let's continue on. So this is what he had to say, and I quote, I was one of those people going through life ready to sweep my sins and my crimes under the carpet because I was too afraid to lay them out on the floor. Oh. He was too afraid to lay them out on the floor. So, I think for some people, whenever they have sins in their lives, they rather just keep it private for most of the time. But when they're ready to give their life to God, you know, they have no choice but to confront their sins and and just confess their crimes. But as long as people don't judge them and give them a hard time because of them, you know, overcoming their sins and try to a new way of life of getting to know Jesus Christ. As far as like, you know, asking him for forgiveness for your sins and and then you want to sweep it under the rug. That's the number one thing you should not do because I've seen people do that all the time in life. You know, if there's something that's going on with you, at least you could do is just talk it out without drama that's basically the only way for you to get it out of your system, but do it in a private manner because you don't want to like, you know, expose yourself. But to me, I think what he went through that time in his career is one of those definitions of trying to understand yourself, you know, before you decided to like, if y'all try to understand where I'm coming from, please just 
Let me know in the comments. Let's continue on. It's like when you don't ask out that beautiful girl because the prospect of being shunned is too great and too damaging. It's less damaging not to ask, just like for me. It was less damaging to, be, well, to believe from a distance. I knew investing in God meant arresting a number of demons and having to come to terms with things I have done in the past. And that's the biggest, well, that's the biggest fear as a person that I've ever had in the ring. Jesus. So he's basically talking about real life issues as well as like his in ring career. And I believe that part has a lot to do with the Ministry of Darkness gimmick. My apologies, just some interruptions going on. So let's continue on. Um, I think this part where he was talking about, you know, not asking a girl is less stressful, you know, because of the rejection from the distance. I believe that has a lot to do with the Ministry of Darkness gimmick, you know, that he had early on in his career in the WWF. But to me, I personally feel like if that whole thing played a role in his personal life, that could be the reason. Because people might think that, oh, he's doing this whole dark religious thing. He doesn't know God. Like, that's what, you know, hypocritical people will say. Because what you see on TV is fake. He's playing a character on TV. In real life, he loves God. He's a real life Christian. Two different things between fantasy and reality. In reality, he is a Christian. He gave his life to God. He restored his faith. In fantasy, he plays an opposite role of the dark priest, you know, the ministry of darkness. So there's like a huge difference. And when you actually think about it, when you have a character like that, that he played for 30 plus years as the dead man, you're going to end up having to confront those demons, not the character, but in real life. So... Much like how Shawn Michaels did when he was on drugs, he was high as a kite back in the late. Like Shawn Michaels from the late nineties, he was lunching. Like he was on some real heavy stuff back then. But it wasn't around two thousand two when he became a born again Christian and he you know, redeemed himself. He rebooted himself. So if Shawn Michaels can do it, Undertaker can do it too. I mean, when you look at Mark Calloway. You don't look at him as just the Undertaker. You look at him as a person who gave his life to God. You know, but on a different way. It wasn't broadcast on TV, but he he did it his way. Now that he's a Christian, he's a total different person as he was when he was on TV. And when you look at it like that, that's kind of like how it is, though. Because I don't think wrestlers and, or any other celebrities, you know, that had God given talent, never thank God for it given whatever it is kind of talent that they have. So, let's continue. The so-called Phenom officially retired from wrestling after his Boneyard match with AJ Styles at WrestleMania 36 two years ago, and he was inducted into the Hall of Fame early this month as one of the most respected names in the business. True that. He, um, he partnered the respect in wrestling doesn't come from the ring. Believe it or not, it's more about how you carry yourself outside the ring. And you know what, that part right there, a lot of people think that they, they call him the locker room leader and he's the leader of the new generation. I don't see that as true. I think he became the leader in real life as if having the most respected person in the wrestling community because Mark Holloway isn't just known as the locker room leader. He was known as the person that had respect the most. He respected the business and people respected him. Because number one, he was different from anybody. He didn't have no beef. I mean, he had some few beefs back then, but it wasn't that serious. He may have some issues with the company, but deep down, he was the most loyal person in the WWE. When all the other wrestlers went to another company, Mark Calloway chose to stay in the WWF at the time. And why do you think he lasted long out of everybody in the WWE? Because his relationship with Vince McMahon says everything you need to know according to the Last Ride documentary. Go check it out. It's free on YouTube. It's to do with how you treat other people, how you interact with them, and license that given. 
There is enough anger and aggression flowing around the place. When the lights go out, you don't need it in the everyday interactions as well. I like the part where he said that as well. You know, if you want people to respect you, it has to be earned. Treat people the way you want them to treat you. I love when he said that because number one, nowadays people lack respect, especially, you know, when you try to tell them something, you try to help people and then they turn around and spit in your face and give you this instead of try to, you know, appreciate the help. Like, you get what I'm saying? And the thing is, it's like Mark Holloway, he's one of those people that you want to respect the most. You want to have casual conversations with, talk about business, life, God, um, family, like whatever it is that you want to talk with Mark Holloway about, you know, it can go on with hours because that's how cool he is. Out of all the celebrities in the world, if I had a chance to host a very special episode to have Mark Holloway come on my stream and we'll just talk wrestling, storylines, career, family, God, etc. It could go on hours and hours and hours. And I know there's going to be more people watching my videos because of that. So that right there really goes to show you that even if you are a wrestler, but you are also a child of God. You know what I'm saying? So that's the team. Meanwhile, The Undertaker was brought back into the church by his wife and fellow WWE star Michelle McCool, with whom he has kids, Kira and Colt. And he is glad what the path in his life has taken. He added, I feel good. I feel happy, happier than I've ever done in my life. I have some ways to go, but I've already gone further than I ever felt possible. And that's what it's all about. And that's what matters the most is you being happy with your life and you're positive and not like people bring you down with those demonic disrespect because life is, you know what I'm saying? Life is too short. You only have one life. So you better embrace it and you better cherish your loved ones and you better take care of your life the best way possible because there's one chance that God can just take it away just like that. If you don't stay humble enough and be grateful that God put you in this position. And for one thing, I thank God that I've been on this earth for 31 years and I'm still here. I thank God for my friends and family. I thank God for my, my sisters, my cousins, my friends. And I thank God for you, my subscribers who supported my content throughout the years. You know, just... Reading this article made me reflect on the years I've been blessed to be on this planet, despite the issues that we're dealing with now. As long as you have God in your life and you thank him and you appreciate him for all the things you've done. I think that's really all that matters. And I think in terms of Mark Holloway. He's the one that really redeemed himself. He had to overcome a lot of demons in his life. And look what God got him. All it takes is you to get to know God. Your way. So if y'all want the article, I will post it in the description below so y'all can read it for yourselves. Then you come back to my video and tell me what are your thoughts on what he had to say and what the article had to say. So if y'all enjoy my Thoughts on this? Let me know in the comments down below. And uh, rest in peace.